Hi, I would like to begin the episode here by thanking some people uh, like Christopher Church, Tyler Humphreys, Gerald Carradine, Jack Connolly, and James Major. All of these are people who have gone to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv and uh, kicked us some money and helped support this show, this network, and other shows like this show on this network. Thank you. We're going to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Additionally, this episode is kind of kind of strange. Uh, if you listen to this, uh, to the full version uh, that's going to go up on Patreon, uh, the generalities were recorded before the uh, the full episode. You'll notice a, a markedly different tone. Gary was in a lot of pain <laughs> uh, because of his back problem uh, at the start. Uh, and uh, with uh, just uh, gets 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 in he's in less pain in the, in the in the second part. So just so you're aware of kind of the oddities around that. Um, also, thank you for understanding about the delays about this episode as it, uh, you know, came, came around. Gary's feeling better. And we're back to recording and we'll be back on track shortly here. Uh, Cool. So let's go listen to this episode about this game. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week we are talking about Outer Wilds, which is an adventure game developed by Mobius Digital and published by Annapurna Interactive for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One in 2019. Yeah. yeah. And this is uh, executive produced by Fenri Eliania, uh, one of our patrons. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's been on our uh, on our radar for quite a while. It has, and uh, I mean, I'll just hop on here. I like this game a lot, Gary. I like it. I like it a lot. I respect it a lot. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of friction when I was playing it. Mm. Um, the the things that I think are really noteworthy are incredibly cool um, about this, but for me, it's kind of like the mecha- falls in the mechanical hole the same way Night in the Woods did for me, mm. where like I was not really rip roar into fire it up at a certain point. Gotcha. Um, you know, there, there's a, there's like distinct phases you play this game in and Mm -hmm. the first and third, the first phase was very fun for me and the second phase was less fun. And then the third phase was like mechanically unfun, but interesting enough to pull me through. Mm, Yeah. Uh, and then I just kind of like, so it ended up being something I respect a great deal. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really glad we did this and I did like it. Like, I think this is really good. The ending is gobsmacking. (laughs) Um, you know, it's, it's very, very beautiful as a work. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of things that I found annoying about the act yeah. of playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I also, I like, I, I am, I'm somebody who's like one of my favorite Atari games was Lunar Lander. So that might also be affecting me. Cause I love this momentum based, like moving around and stuff love to land, love to land things. Yeah. Love to land, you know, to achieve velocity, to, to, to match speed, to do all this stuff. So like I was kind of a pig and shit, like getting around, which is uh, a, a, a rarity. When people, it's when it comes to people the, talk about this game. Yeah. And most of the, it's most of the game. Yeah. In terms of the practice of it, it's not mm-hmm. a unique selling point, mm-hmm. but how you spend most of your day time is getting from one point to the next point. Yes. Um, in the game. Yeah. Um, it's also, I think that part of my also <clears throat> like mild coolness to this had to do with not really understanding what type of game it was it, going into it. It takes a little bit to figure out what it is asking yeah. of you. Yeah. Um, it asks a lot. Uh, as well, like it's a pretty demanding game, and I did not really know what it was because everyone had said like, "Oh, it's really amazing," but go into it not knowing anything about it. <laughs> and I said, "Roger," and then I did not know this was going to be a a game where I should, uh, you know, expect to 
to die a lot. Right. Um, like the way progress would work in this game entirely. Mm-hmm. Like I did not expect this to be a mist like, but it's a mist like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a lesson in common with um, Oberdin, mm-hmm. I thought, because a lot of people have made those comparisons and it's like, well, yeah, yeah there are dead bodies around. <laughs> yeah, it's very different though. Yeah. A very different experience, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's um, let, let's yeah. bite into it. Let's uh, let's take a yeah. bite of this apple here. Uh, in this game, Chomp. you play as an unnamed astronaut. Uh, you're not human. You are a creature called a Hearthian. Doesn't matter. Just a bunch of uh, the the whole cast is a bunch of like Pixar and aliens. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're this you're this astronaut who is caught in a in a time loop. Uh, that ends with your son uh, going supernova. Yes. Uh, so you have to figure out what's going on um, to kind of prevent this. Um, Herthians are gender neutral. I may mm-hmm. accidentally slip in a he or she yep. here or there just from, um, you know, reading literature my whole life. Right. Uh, where, you know, where it's, it's a, <laughs> but I, uh, it's not intentional. Um, right. You are a they. In this. Yes. Yeah. Um. So basically, uh, you control the game from first person, and you spend a lot of time piloting your ship and your jetpack exploring. Yes. Um, the mechanical hook of this is the you know uh, controlling your ship and controlling your jetpack. So mm-hmm. as you mentioned earlier, velocity and inertia are really, really important. Uh, gravity, um, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there's like autopilot and velocity matching, like as you are trying to get from planet to planet and stuff like that. It is very bad. It will it will steer you straight into the sun, um, yep. <laughs> and it even uh, you know underlines this when you talk to somebody about it, saying, "Hey, our ships are death traps," and they say, "I just make sure the sun is in between you and where you want to go." Yeah. Well, they're powerful death traps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. so. So, yeah, uh, you're going to be getting around. Uh, this is going to be maybe a cilantro thing, or maybe I'm just a real weirdo for uh, liking this, like figuring out how to hone this skill so I could get where I need to go quickly without wasting time, like overshooting stuff was fun to me. Yeah, the the movement is, a, is definitely a cilantro thing. You're not the only person in the world yeah. who digs it. But the kind of movement or precision... Um, mechanics involved end up being like the people who are turned off from this that tends mm-hmm. to be a big factor yeah um so that is something you'll either like or dislike yeah uh, this. something that kind of helps out with this is that this solar system and its planets are all very small like the solar system is about 25 kilometers across like it in in distance that the game tracks for you it only takes a couple minutes to get from one side of it to the other and any individual planet you can run from north pole to south pole in minutes so yes yeah uh, a lot of times they have stuff inside the planet so they're a little bit more dense than that mm-hmm. um but uh you know you're not at being asked to explore this is not no man's sky right you're not being asked to explore a solar system no um when you're out of your ship you have a suit and your two resources you're looking at are uh, three really uh, oxygen, jetpack, fuel, and health. Yeah, yeah. Um, for for this, um, oxygen is replenished on your ship or anytime you're near trees. Uh, jetpack fuel is replenished on your ship or anytime you find one of these spare tanks. Mm-hmm. Um, either the other astronauts are either have at their current camp or have left behind. Um, and you can refill your health on the ship. Yes. Um, if you run out of fuel, your jetpack will draw from your oxygen. Uh, this is an emergency. It means you're probably just going to die, which is not a big deal. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's not a big deal. And, uh, you know, it, it depends on how much, uh, you kind of take it personally when a game kills you. Uh, I found, I found this quote, uh, as Gary's friend, Will Hughes, uh, said in a write up, uh, for the AV club, Outer Wilds is a game about dying in space. Uh, you can and will die in a lot of ways. Not just by having the, you know, sun go supernova on you. Yeah, yeah. Um, space is very hostile. And that is, <laughs> you know, one of the ideas uh, behind mm-hmm. it. I, you know, again, I'm not going to be a, a naysayer for every single positive, you know, put a silver line or a gray line on every silver cloud. <laughs> but like, I took no fun in this, mm. uh, in dying and starting over. Um, it was, I don't understand Will's point in that article, that it was fun mm-hmm. to asphyxiate. Um, I was just, you know, that's real weird to me. And I was like, mm-hmm. man, yeah, I just don't want to watch the animation and then drive back out here. Yeah. It's like every time you get to the store, you had to go back home. Like right. I, every time I go through the entry entrance, I teleport back home. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you know, it's fun, kind of funny that that happened, but now I have to drive back out here. 
Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and there's only so many times that can happen before I like kind of lost my mind a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't find the act of dying very fun for me. It was more, you know, there's an option that you get to and end a run prematurely and having that control um, uh, ended up being really useful and satisfying. It like, can be like I've, a fast travel. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. murder yourself to fast travel, like mm-hmm. a limited kind of fast travel. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but whether you die from the supernova, from running out of air, burning up in the sun, colliding with the moon at 500 kilometers per hour, uh, you are going to respawn back at your home village uh, next to your ship's launch pad. You wake up next to a campfire. Yeah. Um, the, you mentioned being able to end the run prematurely. Uh, you can do that by suicide. You can also talk to an astronaut named Gabbro a few times to learn how to meditate. Mm-hmm. to uh, skip to the end of the loop. The game doesn't tell you this, and you have to talk to him a few times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think after you've already seen the supernova, Yes. for this to work, um, I would not have hidden this mechanic. Nope. Um, but uh, this this helps. Mm-hmm. Um, the time limit you're on is, uh, are you, you know, spoilers. Oh, yeah. Um, I you suppose. Know, all this stuff is like yeah. <laughs> pretty interesting. Like, if you're going to play this game, stop listening to this, because it is more yeah. fun to realize and we reckon And we recommend playing it, so... Yeah, this is this is definitely worth your time. Um, the the time loop you're on is 22 minutes long, uh, mm-hmm. so that is not that's a good amount of time. It's enough time to get in one or two kind of discoveries before starting over, um, but not so long that it's meaningless. Mm-hmm. Here, uh, it won't. I did not die from this that often. When I did, I was annoyed, mm-hmm. but it doesn't happen that often. Right. Most of my deaths in the game ended up being from running out of oxygen. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be spending a lot of your time exploring these Nomai ruins. Uh, that is the uh, civilization that came before you. Uh, that seems to have more answers than you do about uh, some of the strange going goings on. Uh, you're going through the ruins. You have a little translator uh, that will read their writing. I love the Nomai writing system. Uh, the way that mm-hmm. um, they show up, like individual pieces of dialogue will show up as like a curl of script. And the dialogue tree between multiple people or like one person continuing their thought, uh, it's done like a mind map. Um, Other curls come off of the first curl. It's very similar to like effectively a message board. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of a clever way to do like an ancient technology and then emulate, Mm -hmm. you know, what we would see as like a a BBS. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. you're doing this, you're reading these these ruins and discovering these things uh, to learn these new facts, which is the only thing that carries over. Um, this is all added to this rumor tracking system in your ship. Um, I do not know why the rumor tracking system survives the loop, <laughs> um, but it does. Uh, so this kind of gives you these little like rumors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can actually, it's like Mist, you can finish the game in one loop. You can just do it right from the beginning um, other than the tutorial, but you have to get knowledge. Yeah. So it has that thing where like the only thing you're really, really holding on to is what you've learned. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the rumor system does a really good job of uh, taking care of that. Yeah. I love this thing. If you like dive into it, it will tell you if there's more to discover in a particular location. Um, It will list off like every individual thing that you would have learned there. There are connections between them that show like, yes, you learned this on planet X uh, and this connects to something on planet Y. And, oh, you also heard about this on planet Z. So you better go to planet Y so you can get some information about both planet X and planet Z. It does a very good job at graphing out everything that you need to explore. Um, And this is a marvel of interface design, I have to say. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, This is this is extremely useful Mm -hmm. um, as a as a little little nugget. Yeah. uh, Here. And it also it it makes you, you know, if you when you get that little updated message like, oh, you've updated your your rumor mill or Mm -hmm. whatever it's called. um, That is a great feeling Mm -hmm. because it's like this trip was not for nothing. I at least got something that is useful towards pointing me towards the next thing to do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as you play, you're going to just basically been following the steps of the dead Nomai. Um, you're going to kind of learn about their plan, uh, both kind of archaeologically and anthropologically. And you're kind of going to learn about these different characters uh, back in the day and their goal and kind mm-hmm. of, you know, the, the goal of this is kind of to make you fall in love with both of these races. Yeah. Uh, I feel like um, the emotional core of this a lot feels like it is contrasting like, it feels like this game is aspirational to me, mm-hmm. uh, is the idea. Like, wouldn't it be great if people were like this? Yeah. You know, um, in terms of uh, science yeah. and exploration. Like, it is it is a game about those things. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be learning about this cast of characters and hopefully growing to admire them. Yes. 
Uh, poor poke and pie. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Serves him right for being named like the boss of a final fight level. Like... Heartless. Heartless man. Um... I, I, I'm dealing with in chronic back pain. I'm going to savage this fucking game. I mean, my back really hurts, and I am not in the mood for these cute-ass Muppets. Um, <laughs> like, and I, being the good cop, am here for these Muppets. So. Yeah, fuck these Muppets. <laughs> you just, your back doesn't hurt. It's, it's true. a fair comparison. It's true, yeah. You know? Okay. Sh- should, I go, should I go and hurt my back? Should I go do some heavy lifting? So it can be uneasy? Okay, yeah. Go yeah. do some heavy sleeping. <laughs> That's how I did it. It's yeah. fucking unfair. Yeah, no, it's... It is pretty unfair. Um, anyway, uh, in addition to your translator, you've got a couple of other tools, uh, and it's it's the Vanda being crucial to your task, although it's kind of confusing what they would be used for at the start. You have mm-hmm. your, uh, your scout launcher. Uh, uh, there's a handheld one, and there's one on your ship, which fires a little probe that will light up an area and also take photographs. Um, yes. And you have a signal scope, which is like a directional radio that you can tune to a certain frequencies to... Uh, locate particular objects yeah across vast distances yes um you know across space Mm -hmm. um so there's a little bit of mistness where you're running into alien technology and trying to figure out how to use these mechanisms Mm -hmm. uh the nomai nomai had an entirely different and worse ui system (laughs) uh, for everything whenever this happens whenever there's an advanced alien race they just Mm -hmm. always have a dumber way of doing it than buttons yeah you know, it's like, you know, this would be great if you just used a button that said what it did. Uh-huh. I don't think that this this, this uh, telekinetic thing is that much better. No, no. Um, especially when it comes to the, sh- the ships. Yep. The unidirectional ships that they have, which is like, <laughs> guys, I don't do not believe you're this advanced if you can't steer. Um, <laughs> they calculated but, uh, the, the, the trajectories at the start. They didn't need to steer well, there. Like they a, knew where they were going from the pl- beginning, dude. If every plane was a missile. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. These aliens are jokes to me. Fuck these Muppets. <laughs> That's the back pain talking. I'm sorry, Muppets. Um, the, um, I don't mean it, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry, Muppets. I'm sorry, Miss Piggy. Um, the, uh, so there's, there's a little bit of that. Uh, most of the time, though, you're just trying to find new things to read. Yep. Um, you're trying to get into locked doors or areas uh, in order to reach new ruins to read more stuff and mm-hmm. learn more about these projects. Making this a game for nerds. Yeah. Uh, it is nerdy, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. but you know, in a good way, these projects are, are fun and good. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and figuring out how they piece together, it has just the right amount of like red herring to it. Um, yes. and the way that it all pieces together is really interesting as well. Um, so, uh, each planet that you go to, uh, I think there are five planets. Some of them have a moon. Uh, they, uh, they all are small and they all have their own little gimmick. Uh, we'll discuss them uh, at length when we get to them. Uh, it's worth saying here in the generalities that all of them are ways to kill you or make it impossible to get to um, all the locations that you need need to on a single on a single loop. Yeah, ways to kill you or ways to make you wait. Yes, uh, which are my least favorite ones mm-hmm. that they do. Yeah. Um, aesthetically, uh, this is has really really beautiful music. Mm-hmm. Um, including a repeating thing that is a chord progression from a song I wrote. So every time I heard it, it's, <laughs> it's like a long, like, a, it's like, Oh, what? Whoa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's not me. You know, that's music, right? I already, so many, I already uh, filed the papers, dude. Um, yeah, it's, it's, well, I'm, we, I'm just going to call it we, even for the time slaughtered? I accidentally, I accidentally covered clocks. <laughs> like, hey, dude, check out, check out this chord progression. It was just clocks by Coldplay. It's like, fuck me. Um, the, uh, but it, the, the music is excellent. Uh, in this, and then the writing is really good as well. Um, mm-hmm. in terms of these, these message board conversations. Yes. Uh, it's really charming and you get to see, uh, you know, a lot of emotional range here. So both the Nomai and the Harthians, they're science obsessed weirdos in different ways. And that could manifest as being like GLaDOS knockoffs or, uh, you know, Cave Johnson kind of thing. Like, I think that Portal did an awful, an awful lot to make. Uh, any pursuit of knowledge seems cynical, weirdly, like the yeah. Yeah, for science, lol. Uh, but th- the love of exploration and discovery and curiosity and all that really, really comes through in this. And as people yes. realize what is in store for them as a result of the discoveries they make, they go through a lot of different shades of both kind of oscillating between melancholy and hope 
and that is the intersection or the valley where I where I that's where I'm a Viking is the intersection of melancholy and hope when it comes to fiction. Yeah, there's kind of there's kind of almost like a term like not terminal or, or terminal or whatever the opposite of terminal is lack of cynicism. Yeah. to this game like when you talk about glados like that's the cynicism sliders being you know all the way up and mm-hmm. these are the cynicism sliders being all the way through the fucking floor <laughs> like this is this is an earnest game yeah um the uh which is good because the emotional touch of it is one of the things about this that really works for me yeah um the uh so graphically it's very simple uh, very colorful uh things do look alien um in general this works out really well when they're depicting sand or like water mm-hmm. it sometimes doesn't look so good like when it's yeah. falling up or down uh but generally this looks pretty good yeah yeah it, like it, it is kind of meant to operate at scale uh is the thing that is like really impressive about this i was surprised yes. kind of at how cartoony some of this was I don't know what I expected mm-hmm. coming into this, but uh, what I saw was not what I uh, uh, walked in bracing myself for. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the character designs, uh, they are not really, there are not too many characters in this. There's like a handful in the village where you start. There are the astronauts that you meet, the other Hearthians who are all in their suits. Um, and then there are the, um, uh, well, well, spoiler, <laughs> uh, there are the spoilers. yeah, there are the spoilers, uh, but, uh, they're pretty charming. Uh, and also mm-hmm. just the Harthians, the, the kind of crude, uh, like tree punk technology that they have is really charming as well. Yeah. And everything the, is very homemade. Yeah. And the fact that they just, it's an entire society built around camping, you know? Yes. Yeah. Hiking, hike values. Mm-hmm. Um, this game began life as a master's thesis of the director, Alex Beeshams. Um, he studied at the University of Southern California, and his initial goal was to recreate, recreate the feelings of the film's Apollo 13 and 2001, A Space Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, this kind of wonder and danger at the unknown. Right. Uh, and over the course of this, uh, the game was in development for a very long time. Um, over the course of this, they prototyped in a lot of different ways, both in pen and paper, um, and in a text adventure, they built a little uh, kind of model in Unity. Uh, when they were ready to show this to the world, this was the first game that uh, was funded on Fig, which I'm not sure if it's still a thing. Uh, this yeah. was the game-focused crowdfunding site in 2015. I think it was like a, uh, associated with Double Fine. I have no idea if it is, st- if it is still a going concern. I also do not know. Yeah. But go Fig. Mm-hmm. Um the, uh, the alpha that released shortly after was very popular, so it brought down the company's hosting servers, just kind of through demand. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had that thing where it was originally planned for 2018, but they blew past uh, that and they got more funding. So they ended up kind of expanding the scope and they made an exclusivity deal with the Epic Game Store. Mm-hmm. Epic Game Store. Which, you know, pissed people off because that is a hot button issue still today. People get mad. People get mad. Yeah. yeah. Um, this game was reviewed really well, received really well. Um, has a pretty avid following, uh, just as, you know, somebody who uh, does a show like this, we have gotten so many requests to cover this game. Um, yes, people have asked a lot for us to, uh, for us to go after this. Um, and it was nominated for a lot of awards, um, and in like really kind of diverse categories as well. Yeah. Big, big BAFTA. Mm -hmm. Tell them big BAFTA sent (laughs) you. Um, the uh yeah and uh as of right now we don't know what the team is working on mm-hmm. next uh presumably something because this was a huge hit yeah and uh and good for them mm-hmm. yeah they did a good thing they made it good That is the end of this uh, public version of this episode. If you would like to hear uh, about Outer Wilds beat by beat, uh, you can hear the full premium episode by backing us on patreon.com slash duckvtv. At $5, you get not just the full version of this episode, but access to every premium WAF we have done, uh, along with a bunch of other bonus shows 
uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, other perks. You can go and take a look. I don't have to describe them all. Uh, thank you for considering doing that. Uh, we will be back next week with a dispatch episode, uh, and then we will be beginning in March, dear God, March already, uh, with Trauma Center Second Opinion, The Magic Circle, and a premium episode about Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Um, yeah, so G- Gary is not here right now, uh, so I will just go ahead and do the outro and say until next time, watch out for supernovas.